Hey, what is up, everybody? This is your boy, AJ Tripp, and welcome to the game according to me. If a day late, I apologize for that. Some things came up yesterday that couldn't allow me to record my podcast, but I'm doing it today, Thursday, January 26th. So, here we are. This is going to be a pretty short one. We're just going to look at the divisional round from this past weekend and look ahead to the conference championship games. And also the Royal Rumble, as that is coming up this Saturday as well. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's talk about the games that happened last weekend. Um, there is the Jaguars and the Chiefs first game on Saturday. The Chiefs beat the Jaguars twenty-seven to twenty. Um, a couple of turnovers down the end by Jacksonville maybe took them out of the game. And 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 then and the Chiefs were, you know, who knows what they were going to do. They had a great drive, ninety eight yards by Chad Henney, who came in for the injured Patrick Mahomes. Now, Patrick Mahomes did play the second half, but he wasn't the normal Patrick Mahomes. And um, so it, it was just it was just a a, a real good amount of game. I think you see the future for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The AFC is going to be a murderous row in a few years with the 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 quarterbacks that are there and, and what could be there. If if Russell Wilson just had a bad year and he goes back to being the Russell Wilson that was in Seattle, uh the Justin Herbert, if he can st- if he can step up and improve and if Josh Allen gets back to being the Josh Allen that was a couple years ago when he was, you know, a MVP major candidate. And then of course we have Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes doing themselves. We get the young guns of Trevor Lawrence, and who knows what's going to happen this uh, upcoming offseason in the quarterback carousel. That could be amazing as well. So this is going to be a murderous road for the AFC. But it's, um, but it's going to be great football, I think, when it comes down to these playoffs because it's going to be quarterback duels uh, probably all, you know, each and every year. And uh, and uh, we almost had one Saturday with the Jaguars and the Chiefs, but the Chiefs move on. To the NF to the AFC Championship Brown. Saturday night was a different story. This was not a close game at all. The Eagles just went, went, went up and down the field on the New York Giants, beating them thirty-eight to seven. Um, the Giants had no no answer for the Philadelphia Eagles at all. And for as good as a team as the Giants were this year, as good as they played, you can tell that they you know that they still may be just behind in the AFC, including the Eagles. And, you know, Daniel Jones is going to have to continue to be um, um, he's going to have to continue to be what he is. You know, and that is a a, just a you know, a rising star. Saquon Barkley is going to have to, you know, continue to, you know, first of all, stay healthy and to, you know, become the, the – he can't, he can't have games like he had in the Giants and like he had in the second half of the season where he was, you know, like 12 rushes for 48 yards. He can't, he can't do that. He's going to have to be a big part of the team for the Giants to continue to um, move up. And I think Brian Dayball is going to be a fantastic – coach for them, and I think he'll be able to lead the Giants to that, but the Eagles moved on to the NFC Championship game, where they were host. We didn't know what was going to happen with Kansas City, if they would host or not. We had to find out on Sunday if the Bills would win because of the game that was not played because of the Dar- DeMar Hamlin tragedy, uh, uh, a tragic incident, incident. Uh, I don't know if we can call it a tragedy anymore because I think he's up and he's well and he's doing doing well and he, he was even at the game Saturday, so I think we can call it a tragic incident. Now, not a, not a tragedy or a tragic moment, maybe. Um, but, you know, so uh, because that didn't finish, we couldn't see because both the Bengals and the Bills had beat the Chiefs, but uh, they really focused on the Bills I guess because the Bills beat the Chiefs and um, and, and since, since the Bills had a more wins than the Bengals, I guess that's the reason why they they just focused on the Bengals and not and focused on the Bills and not the Bengals. 
and, and that may have gave the Bengals some, you know, some some a big chip on their shoulder because they came out and they were tremendous. Uh, opening went right down the field, or scored an opening touchdown, and uh, they never looked back. They went on fourteen nuts and their game was over. They never looked back. The Bills were just they, they were in shell shock. They were not in the way that they were. It, it was it was unreal what happened within that game. And uh, the Bengals took it to the Bills. They won 27-10. to 10. And they moved on to now go face Kansas City in Kansas City in a rematch of the AFC Championship game from last year. So that was going to be a pretty interesting one. Um, for the Bills, uh, I don't know. It seems like this year, it, it seems like, this year they just had so much stuff going on, with the snow, with the with the the, the uh, feet of snow that dropped, uh, you know, before Thanksgiving, and and then having to go to Detroit and play the game, and then of course the Demar Hamlin tragic incident, and just so many other things. They were just so injury prone, losing Micah Hyde and and Von Miller and and Tre'Davious White didn't start the season. And they missed Jordan Poyer was was out for me games. They missed so much time due to injuries. Yeah, it, it just it seemed like they just wasn't on top. And who exactly knows what's going to happen, you know? And you 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 know they need, they need to do a lot of things. I think something like that. I, I really do think they need to get. It, they need to get a running back. They need, they, they need to find them a, a a explosive running back that can get them big runs in the run game, and you know, and they can do some stuff in the pass game as well. Devin Singletary is is a nice guy. Is a nice you know nice guy. Uh, they traded for Naheem Hines. He's mainly been more of a kick returner, and uh, and. There, there's been just a lot of other, and just, and just you know, and um, you know, uh, Cook, the rookie, uh, he, he was okay, but I think they need somebody explosive. They really do, and that's why, like, it made sense for them to try to trade for Christian McCaffrey, but San Francisco beat them to it. So it, it's it's going to see what it is. They need to maybe try to find some someone. In the offseason, maybe they, maybe they need to sign Tony Pollard. Try to sign Tony Pollard. He's going to be a free agent. Um, but but they need some more. They definitely need some more firepower from the from the running running game, and so that Josh Allen doesn't have to do it all. And Josh Allen's got to be better too. He, he's totally got to be better. He's you know he started out the season being great, you know, and taking what the the uh, defense was giving him, but at, at, after at some point, that just all changed, and he just he and it almost looked like he went from he he was he went from, you know, he, he tried to get a touchdown on every play, and and you just can't do that. You can't play that way. And you see the way Joe Burrow played. Joe Burrow was excellent. He was awesome, surgical precision, playing the quarterback position the way it should be played, and it was a, it was beautiful to see. I think that's why Joe Burrow. Or, is he's probably the the best quarterback in the in the league, and uh and that's even with Patrick Mahomes and, and and what he does and just Allen and everything like that. But I just think what Joe Burrow does is just amazing. But that's what that's what the Bills got to do. The Bills have to get they have to they have to look and they have to try to get better. And I think um they, they probably need to maybe fix the offensive line too because there was some offensive line issues. Uh, with protecting Josh Allen, so uh, I think there's gonna be a, a lot of things that they have to do this off season to get back to being one of the the premier teams and be back to being a Super Bowl favorite. Uh, and finally, uh, in the divisional round, the last game was the Cowboys at the 49ers. Uh, 49ers won that nineteen to twelve. And uh, Brett, Brett Brock Purdy, you know, for the first time, Brock Purdy didn't look. Great, you know, uh, back there quarterback. He just he looked decent. He looked competent, but he did not look, you know, great like he has in the 
games in the past. And Lonnet was, yeah, he's a rookie, and that was the Cowboys' defense, making him look at that, look, making him look like that. But he still did enough to make plays. The 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 the, the play the great Kittle in the um, third quarter was just fantastic. The way he scrambled and the way Greg Kittle, you know, he was he was he wasn't supposed to be. He had no right. It was it was a, it was a three level bootleg, short, medium, and and deep. All three were covered, and George Kittle were, was not supposed to be even in the round. He would be blocking, but once he turned around and saw Brock Purdy had no one, he went out, Brock Purdy saw him, threw him the ball, and it's a fantastic catch by Greg Kittle. That's, I mean, that's, you know, and for a rookie to have him do that, that's that, that was fantastic. And the Cowboys kind of, you know, kind of beat themselves. Some Dak Prescott, like, all year long, just turned the ball over inexplicably, and you know, he you know, someone's gotta get better. He's gotta get better too. He's making forty million dollars. Forty million dollars. You can't be turning the ball over like he did the last the last several games that he came back after his injury. You just you just can't play that way. So, uh there's gonna be some things there's there's gonna be some changes on like on that Cowboys team. We already talked about Tony Pollard, who unfortunately broke his leg in that game, but like I said, he's a free agent and I don't know if he'll stay in Dallas, so like I said Maybe someone like Buffalo would come in and use him and, and sign him, you know, and make him a a a a, a feature back. Um, and then there's the you know Ezekiel Elliott. Whether Tony Pollard leaves or stays, is there room for him on this team now? From now on, you know, who knows about that? They need to get some more receivers, some more some more talent for for Zach. So it's not just CD Zane. Michael Gallup is a good player. Um, but he is, uh, he's probably not, you know, someone who can, you know, help C.C. Lamb out. Uh, they got a nice tight end in Dalton Church, Schultz. But, you know, Dan, Dan, Dan Olawski has always said that when they go with multiple tight ends, that's their best thing. So maybe if they get another tight end, they can go two tight ends, two wides, you know, and maybe that can help out, you know, Dak Prescott help out the running game as well. Um, so there's a lot of things that Dallas needs to do to, to, you know, uh, shut Stephen A. Smith up and uh, and get to a Super Bowl, uh, and let's see if they can do that in the off season. So now, if you, if you look at our conference championship games, uh, Sunday, January 29th at 3 p.m., we got the 49ers at the Eagles. This is, I think, this is going to be. This all depends on. How does that offense take on that defense? Because that Eagles defense was, man, were they flying around on in, in, on that offensive line, Daniel Jones, pressuring him and doing like that. And then you're talking about Brock Purdy being a rookie, you know, how can he stand up to the pressure? I think, I think you know, we, we saw what Michael Persons did to Mike, Mike McVinchy, you know, and I think there are some defense – Defensive players on that Eagles defense can they can do that to that to, to that offensive line as well, so that's going to be the big thing. I think the big thing is going to be, you know, it's going to be it's going to be two things. Can the, can the Forty Nine ers offense make enough plays with that rookie quarterback to stay in league with the Philadelphia Eagles, and can the um 49ers defense holds down the Eagles offense. Their explosive offense. Can they hold them down? Enough so that, that, the, that the rookie quarterback, Brock Purdy, can make enough plays to win. I think that's going to be obviously the, the two points in that game. And then at 630, the rematch of the AFC championship game last year, the Bengals and the Chiefs. To me, this is all about Patrick Mahomes and his ankle. Because I I don't think we should anymore not get not trust what Joe Burrow's doing and what the Cincinnati Bengals are doing. So I don't think we need to, <clears throat> you know, we don't need to do that anymore. And uh, and I think I just heard exactly that the the, the people in Vegas have been betting. Betting so much now that the, that the Chiefs started off the favorite. Now the favorite is all the Bengals, and I think and I think they're right. 
especially with now Patrick Mahomes' ankle. Can can Patrick Mahomes do what he normally does, the magic that he does, to get um, his team back to the Super Bowl for the third time in five years? Would that be it? Or would the Cincinnati Bengals once again make it to the Super Bowl under the side of Joe, Joe Burrow, which is amazing. So as these 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 games could be great, or these games can also be blowouts. And in uh, and, and, and in the AFC, it can be either direction. I think it can be a Chiefs blowout or a Bengals blowout. And in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the NFC, I think it could be an Eagles blowout. I don't know if the 49ers are going to be able to blow out the Eagles. You know, I think if they win, it's going to be a tough, close game uh, coming down to the wire. So, who are... My predictions, uh, I, 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 I really want Brock Purdy to get it. So, uh, and this is this is this is a hard prediction, but I'm picking the 49ers in the NFC and in the AFC. I don't know how you cannot go against um, Cincinnati. So, I think the Super Bowl will be the San Francisco 49ers and the Cincinnati Bengals for the third time. The first time since 1989, 88, 89, I believe. So, yeah, I think that's what will happen um, come this Sunday, uh, Championship Sunday. We've got three games of um, professional football, at least NFL football left. we got some stuff happening with the USFL and the XFL coming, but as for the NFL, only three games left. Can you believe it? So, before we end this, we'll talk a little bit just about the Royal Rumble. Coming up this Saturday, January 28th, you can make sure you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at AJTrip20. You can go there, and tomorrow night, there will be, uh, tomorrow night, like around maybe 11, 11 p.m., maybe even over to midnight, I will have done my, um, my predictions for the Royal Rumble. Uh, and then, of course, you can make sure to click the notification bell because after the Royal Rumble, I will be doing my rapid reaction where we'll talk about what went down. And there's a lot of stuff that could be going down. The stuff with the bloodline. It, 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 it's, it's, the Royal Rumble is like, it's, one of my, it's my favorite event of the wrestling calendar. And with the things that could be happening, so, you know, this Saturday, it has just made it so anticipation for it has just been incredible, and I just cannot wait for that. So, um, can't wait to see it again. Go to subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at AJTrip20. You can go there, uh, subscribe, click the notification bell so that when I put out videos or when I go live, they'll come right to your, you get a notification form to your phone, to your desktop, to your to your tablet, whatever. So make sure you do that. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to the game according to me a day late. And this abbreviated version as well. I appreciate it. Next week, I hope to come back with a... Let's see. Let me make sure I have nothing happening. Next week will be February 1st. I have nothing happening. February 1st. So hopefully, uh, there will be a full episode. We'll dive into the NBA. You know, again, talk about the the championship Sunday preview. Uh, maybe do a little preview of the Super Bowl. Or we might wait to the next week for that. Who knows? Um, talk about some other things that we're having for some. We'll give you a recap of the Royal Rumble uh, next week as well. Not in, not as in depth as on my YouTube channel, but yeah, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit as well. So. I think things should have to be good next week. Hopefully, uh, no no surprises will come up or anything like that. So, yes, please. Once again, if you would like to support your boy, AJ Trip, there's a couple ways to do it. Go to patreon.com slash AJ Trip to become a patron. Once I hit a certain amount of patrons, you will be able to determine what you see on my YouTube channel, what video games I play on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash AJ Trip at 20, and what you talk about on my other podcast the word according to me all right guys thanks again for listening this is oh well i should need the other one too or if you don't want to do patreon you can go to anchor.fm slash under triplet show and there 
you can have there's tiers where you can subscribe. Ninety nine cents, four dollars and ninety nine cents, or nine dollars and ninety nine cents. If you feel like you want to su support me in any way financially, if you just if you can't do it, I totally understand that. And hell, I would want to do that to some people, but I can't do that right now. So the way you can do it is you can rate these podcasts wherever you're listening on to them. Subscribe, share them on your social medias, and I'm um, gonna get them the ratings. You know, so you do that as well. Once again, thank you guys so much for listening. This is your boy AJ Tripp signing off. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out.